Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. You know, in Exodus chapter 2, verse 21, and I think this will be a good example for a lot of us. Let's take a look at this. You know, Moses was raised in the house of Pharaoh, and he had every privilege that anybody could have, wealth, fine clothes, anything, he had everything, power. But he tried to help an Israelite man, and it was out of God's season. Although God had a call on his life, he kind of jumped out ahead of God. And he went and he killed an Egyptian because that Egyptian was mistreating an Israelite that was actually one of his kinsmen. He took matters into his own hands. And so God had to do some character work in him. And a lot of times when you need character work, you end up somewhere in what the Bible calls the wilderness or the desert. <laughs> Anybody having a wilderness experience right now in your life? <laughs> all right. Come on now. You got to understand what it's all about. When we have these times that we go through that are so hard for us, they're not intended to hurt us. They're intended to shape our character and help us be the kind of people that God wants us to be so we can finally have what he wants us to have. Are you with me? My gosh, if you knew some of the things that I went through in order to have the privilege of standing here before you today. Oh, God. One of these days I'm going to try to teach or write a book or something on my journey with God. It's just going to, it's just going to take a while to write it. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know if you can imagine. Well, maybe some of you can, you know, if you're as messed up as I was, how many of you are pretty messed up? Okay. Well, <laughs> well, it's already, it's already been painful to get from where you were to where you are. But then on the other hand, you, you're, you have more joy and peace now than you had back then. And so the more you go on with God, the better all of that stuff is going to be. But you do have to spend time letting God deal with you. You have to let God be God and not be in such a hurry to get everything when you want it, the way you want it. I'm just not satisfied, discontent. I want it now. I want it now. How about if we just start saying, God, whenever you think it's right, if you think it's right, and until then, I only have one goal, and that is to be content every day of my life as a way of worshiping you. I believe if we will be content every day of our life, it is worship to God. Amen? That's a way of worshiping Him. I trust you. I love you. I can enjoy this day even if I don't get what I want. So Moses had run out into the wilderness had to make a whole new life for himself. Now let's look at verse Exodus 2, 21. And Moses was content to dwell with the man, and he gave Moses Zephora for his daughter. So I, I just think it's interesting to see that he had a whole life change, whole lifestyle change. Come on, this is for somebody today. He, he lost life as he knew it. Is there anybody here maybe that you're at a brand new start in your life? You've lost life as you knew it. This is for you today. I don't think I've ever used this scripture in a message. Moses had a complete lifestyle change. He was no longer what he used to be. He wasn't doing what he used to do. He didn't live where he used to live. He didn't have the same authority and privilege that he used to have. And now he finds himself living in a desert. And yet the Bible says he was content. <laughs> no wonder God called Moses. And you know what? If you can learn and I can learn how to be content, no matter where we're at in life, not meaning you don't want anything else. Sure, we want things. Go ahead, want things. That's not a problem. But don't lust after things. And you know what lust is? When you want something so much, you can't be happy without it. When you want that promotion at work so bad that you cannot be happy without it. When you're a single woman and you want to be married so bad that you cannot be happy for your other friends who get married. And you think, I can never be happy 
if I'm not married. Or I cannot be happy if I don't have children. Or I can't be happy if I don't have this. I can't be happy if I don't have that. That's a clear sign that we're not ready for the thing that we want. Hello. <laughs> Got to get happy where you're at if you ever want to get what you want. Got to get happy where you're at if you ever want to get what you really want. And you know, I'm sure there's a lot of people watching this message on television right now and you've had big lifestyle changes. You've lost some things. Maybe a loved one's died. Maybe you lost a relationship. Maybe somebody walked out on you. Maybe somebody's really hurt you. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe you lost your retirement. Maybe you lost all your money in the stock market. I don't know, you know. And you find yourself in a totally different place now. You know what? This is the day the Lord has made. Don't let this be an ending. Let it be a new beginning. And learn that you can be happy, married or single. You can be happy in any phase of your life. You know what? I'm well aware that every day that goes by for me now brings me closer to the time when I won't be here. Now, that doesn't mean that I don't still have a lot of great years left, but I just want to tell you, you start to think differently when you hit around where I'm at. <laughs> I mean, everybody knows how old I am. I tell it all the time anyway, so I don't care. But, you know, it's, you do think differently. But you know what? Dave and I don't sit around and think about that all the time. We just, I don't feel old. I feel as good as I did when I was 35. And so, and a lot of it is being content. Not everything in life works out the way we want it to, but I'm determined to serve God with a content heart. I'm not, I'm going to be like that woman in Proverbs 31. When those negative life-stealing emotions try to fill my heart, I am not going to put up with it. I am not going to allow it. Self-pity, get out of here. Discontent, get out of here. It's not the way I'm going to live. Now, Proverbs 27, 20 is very interesting. Listen to this. It says, one of the torments of hell is that people will never be satisfied. Proverbs 27, 20. That's one of the torments of hell. They will never be satisfied. So I think that maybe we could say and not be too far off base that if we are never satisfied here on the earth, then maybe we've got a little bit of hell here on earth. I think a large part of what hell is going to be is a total separation from God and a thirst that absolutely cannot be quenched. That's a miserable way to feel. I, I remember I used to be that way. We, able, we need to be able to enjoy where we're at on the way to where we're going. All right, now let's talk about a few doors to contentment and satisfaction. First of all, a humble attitude is one of the main things that will help us be content. A humble person is thankful for what they have, very thankful for what they have, because the humble man realizes, very much realizes that he doesn't deserve anything he's got anyway. So everything he has is a great blessing from God. Are you with me? But a proud person always thinks he deserves more. No matter what he has, he should have more. You know, humility is probably the cardinal virtue that we should seek after. Humility is the doorway to promotion. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that in due time, in due time, he may exalt you. And then the next verse says, casting all your care on him, for he cares for you. So the way that we humble ourselves is through casting all of our care about our life on him and saying, I'm not going to be worried about when this happens or how this happens or who's getting what or why I'm not getting it. My job is to glorify you today through living a contented life. And I believe if I humble myself and do that, that at the right time, you will promote me. Wonderful. The humble find rest for their souls. Only the humble can live in harmony and get along with other people. 
Humble people don't always find something wrong with other people. And that's one of the things that causes us to be discontented. We're never happy with people where they're at. We're never happy with ourselves where we're at. We always want to look a little different than what we do. Be somebody that we're not. I wrote down a few things here that might be possible areas of discontentment. You can see if any of them fit you. <laughs> Maybe not so much. I don't know. You want to be someone different, you're not content to be who you are. No takers on that one? Okay. <laughs> you want a different life. <laughs> Maybe even look at other people and think, I wish I had your life. I wish I had your life. Maybe some of you have even looked at me this weekend and thought, I wish I had your life. Well, maybe not so much, you know? Because this is not all there is to it. Maybe you wouldn't want to work as hard as I've worked. Maybe you wouldn't want to live in a little glass fishbowl where everybody's got something to say about what you do. There's a price to pay for standing here. And I love it because I'm anointed for it, but I mean, it doesn't do any good to want what somebody else has. You know why? Because if God has not equipped you to be where they are, or equip you to have what they have, then it is going to make you miserable. The responsibility of doing what I'm doing or doing what somebody else is doing can absolutely kill you and crush you if you're not anointed for it. Don't want to be somebody else. You are amazing the way you are. I mean, you are flat out amazing the way you are. And God has gifted you and given you the ability to be you. Don't ever want to be somebody else. My gosh, I wasted so much of my life trying to be other people. You want different talents or abilities. You want to look like someone else. You want to have their body, <laughs> their metabolism. How many times have I looked at some thin woman who eats her brains out every day? And just stays thin. Oh yes, I just have a really fast metabolism. And I'm like, yeah, well, I think mine's in a coma. So maybe I could, you know, could I? I want your metabolism. <laughs> Because, you know, i got to count it out, okay, four peas, three green beans, and, you know, and she's shoveling it in. Yeah, I'll have dessert, throw whipped cream in that coffee, and I'm like, I'm so content, God. I just am so content. Come on. You know what I'm talking about. And I've got one that you just absolutely are not going to be able to handle. I couldn't find the reference this morning, but I can promise you that it's in here. <laughs> the Bible says, and it was basically talking to soldiers, but it fits for everybody. He said, and be content with your wages. <laughs> well, now, lady, you've gone too far. I didn't say that you can't want a pay raise. I'm just saying for today, say, Lord, this is what I'm making today. <laughs> and me having a bad attitude about it is not going to get me anymore. <laughs> That's the thing. You see, we look to men to give us what we want, but only God can give it to us because God's even got to speak to them to get us what we want. We got to get our eyes off of people and stop expecting people to give us what we want and look to God. Don't even be mad at the people because that'll stop up the pipeline too. <laughs> Say, I'm not going to be mad at them. I refuse to be mad at them. God, I am trusting you to pay me what I'm worth on this job. And if you want to give it to me through my paycheck, that's great. If you don't, you can give it to me some other way, but I refuse to put my trust in people. I put my trust in you.
Is anybody kind of feeling the difference of how, what kind of a difference this can make in your life? And you know, one of the things that I had to go through over and over and over in my life was this kind of thing like I'm talking to you about while I was getting from where I was to where I am now was learning to not put my expectations in people. You know, one of the things, one of the reasons why we get disappointed and discontent is because we have our expectation in the wrong place. The Bible tells us to expect God. People are great, they're awesome, but we don't have any ability not to let each other down. You know, people do things that just devastate us sometimes, and I can honestly tell you, they don't even have a clue what they're doing. They just don't even know what they're doing. And I had, I had jobs, one in particular, where I was working for somebody that was supposedly spiritually mature, and to be honest, I was taken advantage of. I wasn't really paid what I should have been paid. And it took me a lot of years to realize that I had to stop looking to that person and look to God. And all I can say is maybe I didn't get it there, but God's paid me back many times over. If you have a good attitude, even if you don't get it where you think you should get it, God will take care of you. Amen? <clears throat> Does anybody need this today? Yeah. Be content. God, there's a lot of things I want, but I refuse to be discontent. And there was a certain man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, give me the part of the property that belongs to me. Give me, give me, give me, give me. <laughs> Immaturity always says give me. And not many days after that, the younger son gathered all that he had, went into a far country, and there he lost all of his fortune. See, that's, that's what happens if you get things before you're really ready for them. Then you just waste them anyway. Do you know if God would have let me do this when I wanted to do it, I would have made a fool out of myself and probably hurt a lot of people. Verse 14, and when he'd spent all that he had, a mighty famine came on the country, and he began to fall behind and be in want. So, you know, if you've read this, you know the story. He finally ended up working for a farmer and eating with the pigs. That became his life. <laughs> From being the younger son of a wealthy man, a landowner, a man of wealth, a beloved son with privilege, he said, give me, give me, give me. I want it now. And he ended up in his own wilderness, which for him was a pig pen. <laughs> for Moses, it was a desert. Mine was a lot of different things. I'm sure yours can be a lot of different things. But we all have to learn one way or the other. So verse 17, and I love this, then when he came to himself, what does that mean, he came to himself? It means he finally said, what am I doing? <laughs> what am I doing? How many hired servants does my father have? And they have enough food, and even food to spare, but here I am dying of hunger. I'm going to go out I'm going to get up and go to my father, and I'm going to say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son, but make me mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Okay. <laughs> Baby Christian. Give me, 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 give me. I got to have this to be happy. I got to have that to be happy. <laughs> Visit the pig pen. <laughs> I mean, if you know what I'm talking about. You know. All right. If you don't, just forget it. You'll catch up in a few years. <laughs> you finally realize, what am I doing? None of this stuff that I think I have to have is really what I need. What I need is God. I need His will in my life. I need to do things His way. Father, make me what you want me to be. To get from give me to make me, it usually takes a pig pen or two. 
Oh, well, I ain't got time to explain it anymore. <laughs> you know, it could be working for somebody that doesn't treat you right. It could be putting your trust in somebody that really hurts you and disappoints you. Well, Joyce, why, why, would, why would God let that happen? Well, maybe you had too much trust in that person. Maybe you felt like you couldn't live without them. And sometimes, you know what, we even do things that are sin in order to keep a relationship. Uh-oh. Now, you don't really want me to go there, do you? <laughs> That's not putting God first. We need to be able to walk away from any friendship. If that friendship is going to come between me and my walk with God. For from him and through him and to him are all things. All things start with him and end in him. All things are maintained and sustained by him. It's all about him. The proud prodigal son started with give me. And then he humbled himself and said, Father, make me what you want me to be. Years ago, I was all, I could never be content, couldn't be content, couldn't be content. And God had to teach me this message that it's not things that are gonna satisfy, only God can satisfy. And I actually went through a period of time where the Lord put on my heart, I don't want you to ask me for one thing again until I release you to. And so every time I would start to ask for something, I would just have to back up and say, oh, never mind, God, all I need is you. <laughs> and God was just trying to establish something in my life. Like I said, it's not wrong to ask for things, but it might be good to have a season where you don't for a while. Where you just go through a period of saying, you know what, God, I can do without all that. You know what I need. I just need more of you. And so then I had come to the point where I was doing that and my life was getting better and better and I, you know, I spent more time with God and God became the main thing. And I saw this scripture one, one time and it meant so much to me. As for me, I will continue beholding your face in righteousness, rightness, justice, and right standing with you. I shall be fully satisfied when I awake to find myself beholding your farm and having sweet communion with you. In other words, he said, I'm going to be fully satisfied when my relationship with you is so close that you're the first thing on my mind every morning. Isn't that beautiful? And Psalm 63 Oh God, you are my God. Earnestly will I seek you. My inner self thirsts for you. My flesh longs and is faint for you in a dry and a weary land where there is no water. I pray this pretty often. I say, God, you have to quench my thirsty soul because I live in a society that is dry and barren. I need you. I need you. Verse 5, my whole being shall be satisfied. Everybody say satisfied. satisfied. My whole being shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise you with joyful lips when I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the night watches. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings will I rejoice. My whole being follows hard after you and clings closely to you. Your right hand upholds me. This is a man that was passionate for more of God in his life. And I can tell you, King David didn't need three more sheep to be happy, or one more pasture, or to write ten more songs. I don't even really think it made him all that much difference if he was king or not. He was happy hanging out with God. I can promise you this. Now watch, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you a promise right out of the Word of God. Any one of you that will put God first in your life, if you will really consistently put God first, and you know sometimes that means making hard choices. It's not just some religious sounding thing that we say. I'm talking about really putting God 
first, putting his will first, putting his ways first, I'm telling you right now, you will never, ever, ever be without every blessing that you could possibly ever want or need. That's a promise. Amen. Now remember, contentment doesn't mean that you don't ever want anything or that you don't want to see any change in your life, but it means that you can be satisfied where you're at on the way to where you're going through trusting God and believing that He's working in your life. Zitten wereldwijd vast. It's a hostile territory here. Prison. And I'm speaking proof of that. Zij die achter zulke muren leven zijn mensen. En Jezus vraagt ons om naar hen om te kijken. I'm here for third degree burglary. I have a lengthy sentence of 400 months. The judge looked at me and said, I'm going to sentence you to spend the rest of your natural life plus 20 years behind these prison walls. A lot of people don't have family here. So they feel forgotten. There's not a lot of people beating the door down to get in here to see us. Here you go. God bless you. That outreach of the hand to touch their lives in a personal way, to, to come visit them, to, to see that somebody is really thinking about them, that somebody cares for them on the outside. You're giving to people that really are like at the bottom of the totem pole. And with your giving, that, uh, that's actually bringing somebody up. It's the fact that you thought about us, even if it was just to come by and have prayer. We just feel loved, you know, that we're not pieces of garbage, you know, um, thrown away, um, that somebody does value us still, and that there is hope, there's hope for us. Tot nu toe hebben we meer dan 3600 gevangenissen bezocht. Zijn er meer dan 3 miljoen cadeautasjes uitgedeeld? En meer dan 139.000 gevangenen hebben voor een leven met Jezus gekozen. Wilt u meehelpen de wereld te veranderen? Word dan onze partner en doneer regelmatig. Wij sturen u graag kostenloos onze brochure toe. Vraag deze aan door te bellen naar 026 20 22 100 of ga naar george-meyer.nl partner. In het leven lopen we hier en daar butsen en schrammen op. Sponsor over. Maar sommige beschadigingen kunnen het leven volledig lam leggen. Hoe overwin je woede en bitterheid? Lees het boek van Joyce Meyer. Doe jezelf een plezier. Vergeef en start bevrijd aan je toekomst. Bestel je boek. Doe jezelf een plezier. Vergeef. Via joyce-meijer.nl of bel 026 20 22 100. Een vervuld leven komt niet uit de hemel vallen. Maar het is zeker mogelijk, zegt Joyce Meyer. En ze laat je graag zien hoe je dat kunt bereiken. Maak kennis met Joyce. Met haar levensverhaal, met haar tips voor het dagelijks leven, met haar boeken en alle andere impulsen die je kunnen leiden naar een vervuld leven. Bestel gratis de informatiebrochure en bel 026 20 22 100. Of ga naar joyce-meyer.nl slash brochure.